can express more than 70 emotions and speaking styles. Like whispering. Or maybe I could sing a song. I can sound terrified. Or impersonate a pirate, ahoy matey. <clears throat> I can even speak with a very French accent. Just like my inventors. <laughs> Looking forward to interacting with you. Something truly amazing just happened. Kaiutai has just revealed their new model, which is fantastic at real-time conversations and represents the highest level of technology in terms of responsiveness. This revelation has surprised the entire industry. In this video, we're going to explore their breakthroughs, their demos, and everything they have achieved. Um, by watching, you'll understand why this model is so great and why it is such a big deal. This development is actually going to change many things in AI. One of the first things I want to show you is their focus on emotions. The Moshi model is quite similar to a voice model that sounds very much like a human. It has realistic emotions and can respond in various ways. Check out this quick demo to see how it performs incredibly well with amazing speed. Hey, how's your day? Speak with a French accent and tell me a poem about Paris. Paris. The city of love, where time stands still, and hearts take flight. In the heart of Europe, it's in prime. The Seine River flows, a beautiful sight, as the lights twinkle and the stars glow clear. Okay, okay, thank you, Moshe. That, that was Paris. Okay, that was great, uh, very heartwarming. Maybe we can try something else. So now speak like a pirate and tell me everything about your adventures on the seven seas. In the folds of time in the cobblestone streets. A tale of pirates and their bravery. A story of salty winds and the taste of freedom. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, Captain, maybe I have a few questions for you. You can help me with that? So what is the name of your ship? My ship is named the Black Flag. Okay. Homage to our pirate life. Okay. Uh, What's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Captain Bob. Captain Bob. Yeah, exactly. What brings you to the pirate life? I don't know, just curious about it, you know, like, uh, what, what does it have for me, you know, to be a pirate? Uh, is it a good life to lead? It's a wild ride, Okay. Katie. Okay, There's okay. There's freedom, danger, and adventure at every turn. Yeah, and so, okay, let's assume I become a pirate, so what will my days be made of? Like, well, I'd start with the training. Okay. Learning how to fight, sail, and understand the sea. Okay. And don't forget, Pirates have their own code. One where loyalty and respect are everything. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe we can try a last thing. So, now speak with a whispering voice and tell me a mystery story. In the shadows of the underworld, where the cold winds whisper secrets, a tale of darkness and light. Okay. Uh... A ray of light, a sparkle of hope. Okay, let's try something. A little star that can uh, be heard. Okay, can you tell me the plot of movie The Matrix? Of course. The first movie was called <laughs> Matrix, okay. released in 1999. Wow. And it was about a guy named Neo who was living in a world where he discovered he was living in a simulation. Okay, okay, that, that sounds great. Yeah, okay, I don't care about the rest. I don't care about the sequels, actually. Released in 2000. <laughs> Okay. When Neo had to defeat the agents okay, thank you, and the Moshi. machines to save the world. Thank you, Moshi. That was great. Uh, yeah, have a nice day. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, let's take a closer look at some of the current limitations of voice AIs and the challenges Koyutai encountered while building Moshi. They discuss how they overcame these limitations using creative techniques and succeeded in making their audio language model very effective. Two main limitations. So the first one is that this pipeline is very complex and having it with many different models induces a latency that is currently between three and five seconds between the moment you ask what you want and the moment you get your answer. Okay, it's fine if I ask one question, but if I want to have like a lively conversation with a lot of turns like we just heard, it can become extremely annoying. The second limitation, maybe more important, is that since we go through this bottleneck of information that is text, we lose all the information that is not textual. So in the beginning, we communicate words, emotion, communication, and so on, and all of this is lost. So these are the two main limitations of the current approaches that we wanted to tackle. So 
what we did is that instead of giving text to the model and making it produce text, we designed a new audio language model. So the way it works is that we take speech without text, just annotated speech of people speaking and so on. We compress it so heavily that it can become similar to pseudo words that we can then give to an audio language model. And this audio language model takes a small snippet of audio and is trying to predict the next segment. And if we do it enough, then the model has learned uh, a lot, as much about speech as a text model, language model will learn about text. And to illustrate that uh, with a very concrete example, uh, we were kindly uh, allowed to use a, a small voice uh, snippet that I'm going to play uh, right now in French. Qui va être l'émergence de l'intelligence artificielle partout dans nos vies. C'est-à-dire que tout ce que l'on fait, tout ce que l'on utilise, va être basé sur des algorithmes. So you may uh, recognize the voice of uh, Xavier Niel in this small seven seconds. And so if we take, give these small seven seconds to our uh, model, we get the following. Qui va être l'émergence de l'intelligence artificielle partout dans nos vies. C'est-à-dire que tout ce que l'on fait, tout ce que l'on utilise va être basé sur des algorithmes. C'est-à-dire que ce n'est pas simplement le langage qui va amener de la puissance au calculateur, c'est aussi tous nos algorithmes, tout ce qui va être calculé automatiquement et qui va nous permettre de répondre à être beaucoup plus efficient. Euh, ces mécanismes que vous avez, ils sont là, il suffit juste de savoir les utiliser et, et de l'avancer et, et de les paramétrer pour que cela devienne euh, utilisable et soit le plus efficient possible. Ça, c'est un, un point qui est majeur et c'est euh, l'émergence de l'intelligence artificielle. And so, thanks Xavier, first of all, for being a part of this talk. And so, the goal of this example was to show you, you know, that this model, just by li listening to speech, it can understand what makes a specific voice, what makes specific acoustic condition, what makes speech with hesitations, interruptions, emotion, and so on and so forth. But we are still far from having a fully-fledged uh, conversational model. Next, we need to look at some of their achievements. They made a few big breakthroughs and they did it very quickly. It only took them six months, starting from scratch with a team of just eight people to create this multimodal model. Uh, major discoveries and breakthroughs that we discovered in the past six months in order to make interaction with AI as realistic as possible. So the first aspect is multimodality. And uh, Moshi can listen and generate audio, but it's not the only thing it also thinks as it speaks, meaning that it has textual thoughts, which is what we uh, show on the, on the screen during the demo. And the reason for that is that even though speech can represent almost everything we wish to convey uh, with language, written text is the most efficient and compact representation for it. And we found out that uh, Using it uh, along with audio greatly benefits to train uh, Moshi faster and get it to give us better answer. Um, by producing jointly text and audio in the split of a second, um, Moshi is able to rely on this rich backbone to provide the best answers to us. So that was the first aspect. The second aspect, and probably the most important, is the fact that Moshi is multi stream. There is not just one stream of audio with like, for instance, us talking and then Moshi replying. Um, it's actually two streams of audio because we want Moshi to be able at all time to speak and to listen. Um, existing work might, for instance, rely on voice activity detection in order to switch from this is Moshi's turns to this is the user's turns. But this is going to uh, reduce the naturalness of the interruption because Real conversations between humans uh, contain some overlap. It contains, it needs to have the ability to interrupt someone. And if we don't have that, we're going to lose precious seconds with every, uh, every such interaction. Thanks, um, thanks to this multi stream aspect, um, now we can say that we almost forget that Moshi is not in the room with us uh, in the same physical space when we discuss with it. Finally, um, I want to highlight that uh, Moshi, it's not just a conversational uh, speech AI model, it's more generally a framework. And it's a framework that can be easily adapted to a number of tasks and use cases. So one instance that we're going to show is that we trained Moshi on Fisher, which is a classic academic data set that was collected in the 90s and the early 2000s. And it consists in participants uh, that are joining through phone and are randomly matched, and they have to discuss a topic. 
So we're going to see a, a discussion of, uh, of uh, Manu, which is going to present after, discussing with one, uh, one of these participants. And you'll see that it's very fascinating because it's like making a phone call to someone that lives in the past. Hello, my name is Bob. What's your name? Hi, this is Jay. Nice to meet you, Jay. Where are you from? I'm called from South Arizona. Oh, brilliant. So you're American? Yes. So you know about the US, right? Sorry? So you know about the US? Yes. Okay, so who's the president right now? The President Bush. Oh, okay. And uh, I heard he, he met the President of France recently. Yes, I heard that too. What's his name again? His name is Jay Rock. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so you, so you know a lot. Do you, do you have a, a computer? I have a computer, I have a cell phone. Okay, what, what kind of computer and cell phone is that? The cell phone is a Motorola. Okay, and, and the computer? The computer is a Dell. It's a Dell, okay. And what is... Laptop. What, what, kind of, uh, what kind of operating system do you have on your computer? Windows 2000. Windows 2000? Oh, brilliant. Okay. Nice. I feel like I... I... Yeah, go, go for it. I have a plug-in modem. Wow. You're, you're super well equipped, Jay. I, I, that's impressive. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Jay. I, I feel like I, I learned a lot about you. It was, it was brilliant talking to you. One of the most amazing things about Moshi is that it's not just some kind of AI model, it's actually a text-to-speech engine that has over 70 different emotions that you can access, which is pretty incredible. Then, using all, uh, all this uh, recorded data, we can, uh, we can train a, a text-to-speech engine uh, that uh, can support more than 70 uh, different uh, emotions or talking style. Uh, and actually, we wanted to showcase to you like what this uh, 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 TTS engine, engine can uh, produce. And now what you will hear is uh, some data that was generated with our TTS. Hey, this time I'm not chatting, but rather being controlled by text. I can express more than 70 emotions and speaking styles. Like whispering. Or maybe I could sing a song. I can sound terrified. Or impersonate a pirate, ahoy matey. <clears throat> I can even speak with a very French accent, just like my inventors. <laughs> Looking forward to interacting with you. All right. <laughs> And so that was, that was not recorded data, that was all uh, generated with our uh, TTS. One thing you might want to know is how they trained this model. They explained that they used a combination of text and audio data for joint pre-training. Additionally, they fine-tuned their model using synthetic dialogues. So what we need to be able to teach Moshi how to speak, when to speak, etc., uh, we need to do what's called uh, fine-tuning on uh, conversation uh, uh, data. Again, it's very hard to, uh, to find large amount of, uh, of such data. And so here we decided to rely on synthetic uh, dialogues uh, to, to train the model. So how did we do that? So first, we started from the uh, text-only language uh, model, and we trained it specifically so that it could generate oral style transcripts. So what do we mean by that? Is that we want Helium to be able to generate what would look like that what would look like real transcripts uh, from real uh, discussion, like we just heard, basically. Then, uh, using those uh, transcripts, we can uh, synthesize them uh, with a text-to-speech engine that we also developed uh, uh, in-house. And finally, we can train uh, Moshi on that uh, on that data. There's one last uh, ingredient uh, to get uh, to Moshi, and it is its voice. So we wanted to give Moshi a, a consistent voice across interaction. And so for that, we worked uh, with an amazing uh, voice artist called uh, Alice, uh, who recorded uh, many 
uh, monologues and dialogues in different situations using different uh, uh, tone of voice, uh, talking styles, etc., et that we then use to train our uh, text-to-speech engine. And maybe we can look at a small video of uh, Alice uh, recording uh, some, uh, some audio. You might be wondering how big this model is. Surprisingly, this model is quite small. They even mentioned that it could run on a personal device, and they demonstrated it here. Seeing the model run on a device is crucial for future success because many people have worried about privacy before. This ability to run the model on a personal device is what makes it so incredible. And to summarize, the model is small enough to operate on personal devices, addressing privacy concerns and paving the way for future advancements. I wanted to go one step further. And the next step is to be able to run it on device. And for that, we'll actually play with it on this small laptop. So it's a standard uh, MacBook Pro. And what I will just do is I will go on this tab, turn off the internet. And I also have a wire, so I just unplug this wire. And bear with me, it's pretty experimental, so hopefully it will go well. And I can just launch Moshi. It would be the exact same model that you've seen, uh, like that was running on the cloud, but no, just on device. Hello, what's up? Hey, can you tell me your name, please? Oh, sure. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty well, and you? That's great. I'm Moshi, and I'm here to help you make the most of your day. That sounds amazing. I'm yes, I can assist you with a wide range of tasks okay. like setting reminders, scheduling appointments, and even providing information on a variety of topics. I'm pretty sure you can do all that. Uh, yeah, I'm actually in front of a pretty large crowd. I'd be happy to help, but I need to know exactly what you need. Can you please tell me about your current problem? Uh, actually, do you know the Python programming language? Okay, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm here to provide assistance, and I'll do my best to make sure that I don't get into any trouble. <laughs> okay, let's say goodbye then. Bye, Moshi. Well, I'm here to help, and I'm happy to assist you. But just remember, I'm not a substitute for professional help. If you need any medical advice or someone to talk to, you should seek help from a proper uh, okay. source. One of the last things that most people won't think about is, of course, the AI safety aspect. If you do have a model that is this quick and can respond with a remarkable degree of accuracy, we know that people could potentially use this for phishing campaigns or for other malicious activities. This is where they describe how they're going to safely identify Moshi content and ensure that this isn't a widespread problem. So one question in particular that we, we want to address is how to determine if an audio has been generated by uh, Moshi or not. Uh, and for this question, we have actually considered two strategies. The first, uh, when online, is quite simple. We just keep track of the audio that Moshi generates by extracting some uh, signatures that we put into a database of generated content. When you are presented with a new audio, we can extract a signature as well. And if we find a match in the database, we know that we have extracted uh, a signature which, which corresponds to an actual audio we generated. So we can say, oh, this is a generated audio. The second strategy is called uh, watermarking. And in this case, we add some inaudible marks, you, you can't hear them, to the audio we generate, such that we can detect them with a specific uh, detector. So this is an active area of research, uh, which is both uh, important, uh, challenging, and interesting. Thank you. I have to admit, I'm genuinely amazed by what they've accomplished here. It's truly remarkable. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on it. Did it leave an impression on you, or were there any aspects that stood out to you in particular? In my opinion, this development is incredible. And if you share the same excitement, I'm confident that we're on the cusp of a groundbreaking and game-changing moment in the world of AI. I anticipate that we'll see some major shifts and advancements as a result of this innovation. Before we wrap up, I just want to remind you that if you enjoyed this content and found it engaging, Please don't forget to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. That way you'll stay updated with more interesting topics and discussions like this one. Thanks for joining me on this exploration and I look forward to hearing your thoughts.